Hi, my name is Dr. Anneli Bude Reyes. I am a clinical neuropsychologist at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. And I just want to thank uh, Dr. Maria Spinola for the invitation to talk about this topic and the work we do in, in our clinic. Thank you so much for joining us today. So the first question that I have is like, what are the differences between normal and abnormal aging? Yes, so as we age, uh, there are mild changes that happen um, and that are considered normal part of the aging process. And they may involve changes um, that are minor, minor and mostly affect uh, our ability to process information quickly, to uh, control our attention, to do multiple tasks at the same time, or hold information in, um, in mind. So it may take longer to complete a task or learn new t things. Um, and people often will misplace uh, items like th their glasses, their cell phone. And sometimes they may forget how to, uh, the word, uh, a word that they would like to say. Um, they may have problems with what we call prospective memory, which is like remembering to remember. Um, like when you walk into a room and you are wondering like why am i doing there but eventually you remember what you want to do so that's normal in as we age abnormal uh, changes or things that are not typical for age are declining cognition uh, declines in uh, thinking abilities that are greater greater that will be expected for the person's age and education um, and they, these declines may affect the person's ability to uh, perform daily activities and they may become dependent on someone else. Uh, for example, the person may have difficulty uh, with judgment or making decisions. Um, they may get lost in familiar places. Um, they may lose track of time and may become disoriented. They may have difficulties like having a conversation due to comprehension problems. Uh, they may repeat themselves. Um, frequent uh, will ask the same questions and they may be forgetful and they may have difficulties at also planning and organizing things and also again misplacing items but being unable to try, track their steps and remember what where they put it or what they did before. So those are more um, indicative of that is a problem that is greater than is expected for the person's age. Thank you. And what should people do if they realize that their parents are showing signs of abnormal aging? What we typically see is like a family member, it could be, you know, uh, children or a spouse, um, or sometimes even the patient in early stages may notice these changes. Uh, the first step is to visit uh, um, a neurologist someone who uh, specializes in a treatment of cognitive disorders. And they may they will do an evaluation, a neurological evaluation where they're gonna examine the person's um, uh, mental status. And based on the presentation, they uh, may refer the patient uh, for further testing, um, including neuroimaging, uh, lab work and then neuro neuropsychological assessment. And that's uh, then the work that we will do in our clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell us more about what are the differences between a visit with a neurologist and a visit with a neuropsychologist? Well, the neurologist is a physician uh, that he, he will be the person uh, that will make the final diagnosis. And we are uh, neuropsychologists, we are a spe specialist in um, evaluation of thinking abilities. So when we see a patient that is being referred by a neurologist, we do a comprehensive assessment of those abilities. We look into many different areas of functioning and uh, we try to determine whether the person's changes, the problems they're noticing, it is greater like i mentioned that is expected for their age and education and and determine whether the performance in our testing is indicative of a problem that may be related to um, a neurological problem like a type uh, of dementia so what is dementia and in, in why some people develop dementia 
Well, uh, dementia is a syndrome, which means it's a group of signs and symptoms that shows when a person has a decline in thinking abilities, in cognitive functioning. And it is caused by um, um, neurological uh, brain disorder, by a brain disorder. And it will affect the person again, uh, like I was mentioning, um, ability to carry out um, daily activities. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, diagnostic manual of mental disorders described dementia as um, disturbance in memory and also uh, any additional uh, thinking ability that may include language, attention, or executive functioning, which is our ability to plan and organize things and pay attention. And, um, and now it is also known as a neurocognitive disorder. Can you talk about Alzheimer's disease and what should we expect if a loved one gets diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease? Yes, so when we talk about dementia, dementia can be caused by different processes and there are different types of dementia. Uh, those include like, frontal temporal dementia, uh, Lewy body disease, vascular dementia. Uh, Parkinson's disease can also uh, cause dementia. And then we have uh, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia about 60 to 90 percent of cases of dementia are caused by Alzheimer's disease and it affects about seven percent of individuals between the ages 64 and 74 and um, 53 percent of people 75 and 84 are, can be affected by dementia uh, by uh, Alzheimer's disease in particular um, it is caused uh, there are different um, uh, factors environmental factors for example um, uh, someone with a traumatic brain injury may have a, a greater risk for Alzheimer's disease and also so there are physiological and genetic factors and physio physio physiological factors include um, changes in brain functioning and how brain cells communicate and um, damage in a particular brain area that is called the hippocampus. And that's when that happens, um, then um, a patient may start uh, presenting symptoms of uh, specifically of Alzheimer's disease. How can we help someone with Alzheimer's disease? Yes, so typically when uh, when we see patients and uh, you know they're being referred by the neurologist or they come to us, um, uh, some of the main uh, complaints that the family members of the patient may have is forgetfulness. Uh, they mention that they they often repeat themselves and they have problems retaining information. They may be disoriented and all that. And depending on the stage and the symptoms that the patient may present, um, many times the patient is unaware of these changes. Uh, so that is very important for family members and people who provide support to a patient to understand that. And that way they can help them better. So again, depending on, on the stage and the process that uh, uh, the, uh, the person is presenting, it is important to provide an structure, help the patient with reminders, um, just um, kind of assess the level of independence, whether they can uh, pr uh, complete certain activities on their own, um, and then determine what other things they will need more help with. Um, in that case, that will that will reduce their anxiety and also um, the stress that patients feel when they are confronted with things that they're, they're, not, they're not able to do. Um, something important also with for family members, uh, when uh, they have a, fam a loved one who's been recently diagnosed with dementia, uh, to uh, get uh, be informed, uh, get information about the, the disorder what kind of uh, signs or symptoms they may, they may experience at, what are the things that they need to be paying attention in order to provide the best support they, they can for their family member. And that's great. And, and what resources do you recommend? Well, for example, in case of um, um, Alzheimer's disease, um, the Alzheimer's Association has excellent resources for family members and patients where uh, they provide information about 
the, the symptoms, um, how to um, help uh, the, the patient and also resources that they can uh, use, for example, support groups, uh, information about clinical trials, uh, information about how to manage day-to-day -day activities. And also, for example, some families may experience problems with um, orientation or they may be concerned about family members getting lost. So there are things that you can do to help them uh, a state in at home um, for safety and all that type of stuff. And also they have information by region. So depending where you live, um, they have support group and um, chapters uh, for specific areas. So there are also some um, resources that we like to share with family members. And there's a book uh, called um, The 36 Hour Day. Uh, it provides uh, um, very uh, specific information about things to do uh, with behavioral changes that the family may have, um, that the, the patient may have. So um, again, uh, looking for resources about how to handle day-to-day -day situations uh, will be a very good thing to do because uh, you a family may need to be flexible and make changes as, as things start happening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then um, I see a lot of patients who have um, parents uh, usually uh, who start to develop dementia and they have difficulty you know, taking care of them. They become very stressed as caregivers and they some of them reach a point when they are not able to provide that care so what do you know what resources that are available for for them for family members that are unable to provide yes so again it will be very specific on the area where the person lives um, there are for example um, we're here in south florida there's a place called Vitas where they provide support for family members where they will help someone to take care of their parents uh, or their family members. Sometimes for a short period of time, um, let's say that um, someone needs to, to be out of their home for a few hours, they arrange for someone to come and help during those times. They're also, um, also for, um, elderly association um, and information about places uh, for placement uh, where sometimes family may have to make the decision to uh, send their family member to a, a place where they can have 24 hour care. And um, those again are, um, can be arranged through uh, Medicare or the, the, uh, any type of benefit that a patient may have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, what are what are the usual benefits that Medicare offers? Do you know? Um, not specifically, uh, but again, it's going to be based on the area where the person lives uh, and the resources that are available. Um, you know, every state and city have specific resources for for in you know, the older adult population. Um, so any times the providers, um, for example, when you go to a clinic, they may have a social worker that can um, help you set up those services for your family members or like check for their um, insurance or Medicare and what um, services they can uh, receive based on, um, on what's available. Uh, but um, many times the doctors, the doctor's office will help to set up or will, you know, guide people to the right place where they can get more information about that. But the first thing is just begin with the, a specific association related to uh, the problem the person may be having. Um, we're talking here about Alzheimer's and there are a lot of resources for Alzheimer's, but there are also other, like I mentioned, types of, of dementia and every um, association may have specific uh, resources for that. Okay, thank you. Can you talk 
more about the role of diet, exercise, uh, socialization, in the prevention of dementia, and also in the slow, slowing the progression of Alzheimer's. Yes, yeah, so now, and research have shown, uh, we have data about the importance of, you know, all those things that you mentioned for, um, we, we're now more focusing on what we call brain health, healthy aging, uh, definitely diet, uh, there are specific, um, um, specific uh, nutrition um, guidelines that help improve um, cognition or thinking abilities. Um, there's a lot of data showing the, the, the effectiveness of uh, physical exercise. And again, these things, uh, diet, exercise, um, many other activities may be done under um, uh, clearance or uh, medical guidance, because many times, uh, we, you know, we're talking about uh, older adults and that may have any uh, many comor comorbid disorders, and other medical conditions that may affect other areas. So it's important to uh, follow medical guidelines when engaging in a specific nutrition plan or uh, uh, exercise plan. When, uh, so that way they can do that in, in a safe way. But we also know that a social interaction helps a lot with um, uh, thinking abilities and promoting uh, cognition and avoiding isolation. And mostly uh, things that we recommend is uh, for people to engage in um, activities that are um, interactive, meaning talking to other people. We, we recommend people to try to stay connected. It may be online with other people, their same age, family members. I'm doing things again, things that are more interactive. Many times people ask about, for example, uh, computer games and that type of stuff that helps. It could be helpful, but um, it is more beneficial when we do things that are more interactive, when you're talking to someone else and, and spending more time with other people.